Okay, time today for another video presentation. Today's topic is Newton's second law, and this will be a pretty short uh, video for you here today. Pretty straightforward concept. We are adding new equations in. Last time we added in W is equal to mg, and really Newton's second law is a version of that W is equal to mg. I'll explain more about that in a few minutes. All right, so the idea of Newton's second law is it, it talks about force and acceleration. So we're dealing with force and acceleration, and now force is going to be a new variable for us where uh, we're going to be using force there. But really, we've already talked about this with weight. Weight is a force, and a g, the acceleration due to gravity, is an acceleration. So that's why I say that this Newton's second law is, uh, has some similarities to that weight equation. A, an acceleration is a change in speed or direction. That would be an acceleration anytime the velocity changes. And it takes an unbalanced force to cause the acceleration. And that's where that net force concept is coming into play. So, um, you know, you might have one force moving in one way, maybe friction against you, but it's that net force that we discussed in the last video that is uh, really causing the acceleration. Okay, so here is also something that should make some sense here and that is that the bigger the force the bigger the acceleration is going to be and it turns out they are directly related to each other if you double the force you're doubling the acceleration and uh, the mass has something to do with it as well it takes more of a force to accelerate a larger mass than a smaller mass so uh, the force and the mass are going to be inversely related if the acceleration stays constant this will make a little bit more sense with the calculations once we start doing them. Okay, so here is Newton's second law in formula, uh, in a formula setup. So F is equal to ma, that's Newton's second law. F is the net force, m is the mass, and a is the acceleration. And once again, since a Newton is a derived unit, the mass has to be in kilograms, and the acceleration will be in meters per second squared, in order to come up with that derived unit, the Newton. So here's Newton's second law for you. Okay, so let's put it into action right away, right? How much net force would be needed to cause a 20 kilogram mass to accelerate at 3 meters per second squared? All right, why don't you give that a shot, and uh, when you come back, I'll have the solution for you. Okay, welcome back. All right, so here we are going to, as always, identify our information. So we have a mass, or m, of 20 kilograms, a, which we're familiar with, of 3 meters per second squared. We are looking for the force. And uh, once again, I put the units in here. You don't have to do that with your calculations. Uh, but the kilogram meters per second squared is reduced down to the derived unit of newtons. And of course, 20 multiplied by 3 is 60. So 60 newtons is the answer there. Okay, let's see. Let's try another one. All right, here's one where you've got an applied force, but there's a force of friction. Remember the free body diagrams where we had an applied force and friction working against it? Well, that's kind of like a vector problem, right? So if the mass is 5 kilograms, what's the acceleration? Well, we have to take into account the idea of what the net force is going to be. And just like the tug of war, this is going to involve subtraction. So the net force of 50 minus 20 means that we have a net force of 30 newtons available to cause this acceleration. And once we have that, here's my F is equal to ma, there's my net force of 30, there's my mass of 5, and it's the acceleration I'm looking for. So by dividing 30 by 5, I get the acceleration, and that's 6 meters per second squared for this problem. Okay. Let's see, a couple more concepts for you. Like I said, this is going to be a very short video. Here's Newton's third law. And the idea of Newton's third law, oh, there it goes. The idea of Newton's third law is that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I, let's see if we can see this here. If I push against uh, a force here pushing against the table, the table pushes back, and I end up moving in the opposite direction. So I push on the table this way, and I go back that way equal and opposite reaction. So I'll push on the table and I'll go back that way. It's also kind of fun uh, rolling around on this chair here, so that's not bad. Alright, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, Newton's third law. 
So for a balloon, the air pushes down on the air that's already there, the air coming out of the balloon, and the balloon goes up because the air pushes back on it. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. All right, so really if you think about it, I, I didn't think about this until I started teaching physics here, but the tire on a road, like the tire is going to spin this way. So when the tire uh, moves, it's actually pushing against the road this way, and it's the road pushing back that makes the car go down the road. So that's pretty good there. Uh, and uh, same is true for walking. Think about that. Have you ever thought about that? But when you're walking, you push against the floor this way, and the floor pushes you that way. For a reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and it certainly helps for walking. People should not forget the idea of for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If you are forgetting this, it could be very costly to you. Uh, here is an example of that right now. And uh, here we go. Here's a, uh, can we see that? There's a helicopter coming in. Have you ever had something where you, th uh, you say to yourself, wow, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but later on it didn't seem like such a good idea. I think these people were one of those, because if your helicopter is pulling on the boat, the boat is also pulling back on the helicopter. So that helicopter went splash into the water. Do you want to see that again? Of course you do. So uh, Newton's second law here again in action. And uh, what do we got here? So now, here you go. You're going to pull on the... Oh, this probably seemed like a great idea. We're going to hook up the boat. We're going to pull it along with the helicopter. But the boat does pull back on the helicopter. And there you go. There you go. So don't do that with your helicopter and your boat. All right, so that's the idea of the uh, action and the reactions there. And um, just one other thing that I wanted to point out here before I close up this video is this symbol here. What is it? You know what it is? I guess they call it the yin yang. And there was a book that I was reading once, the, uh, the Tao, or somebody told me once that it was pronounced Tao, but it's an idea that it's a, a, an Eastern philosophy, an ancient Eastern philosophies. And I did mention to you before that a lot of our understanding of this comes from the Western culture and from, uh, you know, mainly the Greeks and moving through Europe and then. Uh, a lot of Europeans settled the United States originally, so we kind of have this slant toward Western civilization. But in the East, uh, they were, well, wherever there's people, people are thinking of these things. People don't uh, think of it just in one culture. All cultures are thinking of these things. But the idea, uh, and I have limited understanding of uh, uh, Eastern philosophies, but the idea here is that everything contains its opposite. And the gist of this book here was that you could take lots and lots of things that are considered modern physics, and you could trace back some of their origins or similarities to what was written about 3,000 years ago in uh, China and other places. So there you go, and that's the end of our video for today. If you have any questions, please bring them to class, and I look forward to seeing you there.